In Climate Watch, a scientist is working to fight climate change by bringing back parts of the Ice Age. It's an attempt to cut down on the thawing of permafrost, a layer of the ground that contains high amounts of greenhouse gases. 60 Minutes correspondent Scott Pelly traveled to the Siberian Arctic to see the experiment. As a demonstration project they call Pleistocene Park, Nikita Zimov is knocking down trees over 54 square miles and restocking the big grazers. Zimovs believe returning the land to its Ice Age appearance will cool the permafrost even in a warming world. You're trying to bring the animals back now. How can you do that? Physically, I mean, or morally, what's, or financially? <laughs> All three, but let's start with physically. You need what? Hundreds of thousands, millions of these animals? Uh, you need to start with something. Second, uh, you need to prove people that the concept work. And to prove that concept work, you, for many things, you don't need millions of animals. You brought up the moral issue of bringing the animals in here. What do you mean by that? I mean, some people say you're playing God. Uh, you know, I think it's not me playing God. It was our ancestors who was playing God 15,000 years ago. Humans came and they dropped the number of animals worldwide. And we are just trying to you know, get it back. Okay, for more on this now, we are joined by Peter Dominical. He is the Dean of Science at Columbia University, as well as the Director at the Center for Climate and Life at the University. Thank you so much for joining us. So that's one theory on how to handle the problem, but I want to just talk about what the problem is. He's trying to uh, stop the permafrost from melting. W what's permafrost? Right, so permafrost is ground that is permanently frozen. Uh, by definition, it's frozen for two or more years. Up in these regions, the soil can be frozen down to depths of hundreds of feet. And so it's basically this remnant of a frozen landscape since the last ice age that mm. goes down hundreds and hundreds of feet. And it actually represents roughly a quarter of all of Northern Hemisphere land area. So it's a huge amount of area. So why is it important to stop it from melting? So the reason why we want to stop it from melting is twofold. One is that uh, in these soils is a lot of organic matter that's been frozen, just like a chicken that's frozen in your freezer. What's happening is it's starting to thaw. And so the chicken or the broccoli or whatever it is that's in your freezer is starting to rot. And as it starts to rot, then all of that organic matter that was in those soils starts uh, being activated and gets released to the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, methane, these are potent greenhouse gases. And there's so much carbon in these soils that it can actually be many, many times what humans are putting into the atmosphere. Cool. So Peter, explain something to me. Um, Surface air temperatures in the Arctic are rising at a faster rate than the rest of the world. What's the science behind that? So the observations are that if you had a thermometer in Alaska or in Siberia, you would be seeing temperatures rising on average twice as fast as the overall planetary warming. So we've seen something like uh, a couple of degrees Fahrenheit warming uh, since, uh, since uh, the 1850s. Uh, the Arctic has seen twice that. So it's, they've warmed up roughly about six degrees Fahrenheit. So what's going on there? Uh, so what's happening is that this is the canary in the coal mine. Mm -hmm. So if, if we it. were living there, this is where we're really seeing lots of change. Wow. So I don't, am I reading this right? The temperatures in Siberia and Alaska today are an average of 35 degrees warmer than usual? That's right. That, yeah, sounds, that <laughs> sounds like a lot. That's why I thought maybe it was a typo. <laughs> because usually when you hear about this stuff, you it's think to yourself, a, a couple of degrees, of degrees yeah. the ocean temperatures. Generally, when we think about this, we think about the ocean temperatures. A couple of degrees can have cataclysmic effects, but 35 degrees sounds like a lot. Yeah. Right. It's actually not that much different than the temperature in New York today. Wow. <laughs> it's incredible. Unbelievable. But is that a, okay, so sometimes... You know, as we know, living in New York, uh, sometimes we have uh, 70s. It was 70 over the mm -hmm. weekend, and then the temperature drops, right. right? And we go, oh, now things are back to normal. I mean, is this a trend, or is this a sort of an anomaly that this season is particularly warm or something like that? Right, so there's weather, and then there's climate. So, yeah, right. you know, weather is what you get, and climate is what you expect. What's happening with climate change is that the overall trend in temperatures are getting warmer and warmer and warmer, but they're expressed sometimes as these, you know, these crazy anomalies, these crazy... Uh, deviations from normal mm -hmm. like what we're having today up there so is it I mean given that humans have uh, if you think about the things that may have accelerated the climate to change um, those things have only been around for about 200 years uh, is it possible to reverse what we're seeing right so the the, the way to uh, limit the downside effects of this the, the, the way to limit the uh, permafrost melting for example is to stop putting 
greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we have control over. And you may have heard that we have something on the order of about 10 years to reach peak emissions in carbon and start going, reducing emissions. So that's the task for our lives and for our children's lives. We do have control of that. We can do that. It is doable. The mm. uh, technologies exist. Uh, so we, we can turn the corner, but there's a certain amount of warming that's already baked in. Right. What we don't want to do is just take off as business as usual and just fry the Arctic because not only is it the wrong thing to do, but uh, it actually uh, poses some real dangers for humanity. Wow. Well, Peter Dominical, really happy that you came. Yeah, I hope you come back because I feel like yeah, there's, there's a lot, lot that we can tap into. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Professor. Thank you so much for having me here.